Good morning. We're about to start a uh, review of non-parametric analysis and we will provide an introduction. I want you to remember that statistics can be made to prove anything, even the truth. You remember that. Now, do you, do you remember the normal distribution? I want you to think about that as we begin this journey into the world of non-parametric analysis. Here's a little normal distribution curve. You would recognize immediately that this is the standard normal distribution curve. You see that z-score? And then we have so many standard deviations on each side, and it is just beautifully symmetrical and just fits right where it's supposed to. Isn't the normal distribution a beautiful thing? One could almost wish that everything was normally distributed. Well, not me. I think there are some things that are better that they're not normally distributed. Let's so uh, look at some of the things that are assumed to be normally distributed. Galaxies. Uh, some statisticians have said that all large data sets are normally distributed. I don't, and I don't really know how they describe large, but I would assume that the number of galaxies would indeed be a large data set. Tip my coffee to that. Stars in the galaxies and the weight of stars might be normally distributed. The color of stars might be normally distributed. People can be normally distributed. What is the average height of people? Uh, what's the average shoe size? All of those things are deemed to be normally distributed. Starfish can be normally distributed. What's the average weight of starfish for an adult starfish? Aardvarks can be normally distributed. Banded aardvarks can be normally distributed. And the Hungarian banded aardvarks and the albino Hungarian banded aardvark can be normally distributed. Those of you that took me in the first quantitative uh, uh, class understand what I'm doing there, that I have a fascination with the albino Hungarian banded aardvark that has infested Texas. Pretty interesting. Uh, there they are, the albino Hungarian banded aardvarks. A lot of normal distribution sets included with those little creatures. Would you want your grades to be normally distributed? Uh, many years ago, I took a class with a faculty who came in and said, the grades in this class will be normally distributed. I want you to look at that just a minute. Do you like getting a C? Well, under the normal distribution, there's a certain percentage, what, 64, 68%, who knows, that are normally distributed. From B to D, it's what, 96% normally distributed, only 2% A's and 2% F's. I don't know if I like that or not. But this faculty member thought he was very clever and knew a lot about statistics because he assumed that grades were normally distributed and he was going to see that his were. In a class of... Uh, of uh, pretty good size, that might be troubling. 68% are going to get C's, 14% B's, 14% D's, only 2% get A's, and 2% get F's. Well, the 2% get F's might be okay, but, but what if nobody actually failed? Are you going to give 2% of them an F anyway? Well, if you're going to make your grades be normally distributed, that's what you're going to do. In a class of 20, that means there'll be no A's, no F's, Three B's, three D's, and 14 C's. How do you feel about that? Do you really want everything to be normally distributed? Well, I want you to consider a new type of distribution. Uh, this, this is a chi-square distribution. And in this distribution, the bulk of the data may be out on this side, trailing off on that side, or the bulk of the data may be out here, trailing off on that side. Grades are actually a chi-square distribution. Uh, the distribution can be skewed to the left or to the right. Uh, a rejection reader, region can be on either end. Here I put the rejection region out on this side, and the rejection region in the one-tailed is, uh, say, 5%. If the data fall out here, we'll reject them. The 5% could be over on this side if we chose to. This is called a chi-squared distribution. This is the Greek letter chi, and that's a squared, the chi-squared distribution and uh, it uses an F statistic to determine significance. The chi-square distribution can consider areas on either end. Your rejection region could be here. Your rejection region could be there. This is an example of a two-tailed test where we have a rejection of, uh, of alpha 
And uh, we, we want a significance of alpha, so we divide our significance in half and put half of it here and half of it there. If it was 5%, that'd be 2.5% here and 2.5% there. And this is the, the uh, null hypothesis is not rejected here. And of course, if the null hypothesis falls in either end of that, then it would be rejected. This is an example of a two-tailed test. There are some great and profound truths about uh, the distributions that you need to know. First of all, Likert scale are generally not normally distributed. Uh, you know, you, you go out and you on a scale of five to one with, with uh, five being the most satisfied and one being the least satisfied, rate your satisfaction with this instructor. Hmm. A lot of you will say, better be nice, might have him again. Well, don't, don't ever answer that way. Those are anonymous. But, but, you know, most people say, well, you know, he was great, five. Another say, well, I didn't like him a little bit, four. Some say, well, he's really scummy. I'll give him a three. And then there's somebody out there, generally the one you tried to help the most, who appreciated it the least, who says, well, that sucker's going to get a one from me. Well, I want you to think about that distribution. Those, those are Likert scales. And they are generally more chi-square distributed than they are, than, than, uh, much more so than they would ever be normally distributed. Uh, Likert scale data are usually chi-square distributed. They're not normally distributed. And many, many distributions take this form. That's why this form is so important. I want you to consider, though, that if you go out and you, you randomly select a large data set and you're looking for a chi-square distribution or something that's skewed far to the left or skewed far to the right, uh, what, what is interesting in that is that the likelihood is everything you randomly pick will uh, be normally distributed. That's just your luck. But we're going to play with this song. Again, I, I want to thank you very much for your support. This has been fun. We've come a long ways through this course. We started down with the introductory terms. We, I mean, we, we moved through correlation factor analysis. We went into linear regression, multiple linear regression. We did t-test. We did ANOVA. And we did MANOVA. And now we're in non-parametric design. You've done well to come so far, Pilgrim, with so much hair, with so many after it. May the odds be ever in your favor.